Well, good day to you. It is July the 31st, and I hope wherever you are, you are doing well. My name is Gary Willing, and as always, I want to welcome you to Search for Signs. If you're new, and welcome you back if you have been here before. But if you want to know more about who and what Maitreya is, what he's about, why is he here, what does it mean that the teacher and these masters are coming back into the everyday world, or even if you want to see if there's any truth to what I'm saying about Maitreya, I would suggest checking out some of the websites that I provided links for in the description portion of these videos. The links are down there. If you just scroll down, you'll see them, but I would definitely recommend the Share International site if you don't know anything about this information because you can get more information about what I'm talking about there. You can see if there's any truth to it better on that website than you can anywhere else. So hopefully you'll take the time to do it because it's free and it's there for you whenever you want to look into it. Now, if you want to come back and you want to join the discussion, you want to ask questions or post comments, you can do that by, of course, you can drop me a comment and let me know what you think either way, or you can also add a, post a question in your comment section, or you can email me at searchforsigns at mail.com. All right, now this person said, Maitreya is the Antichrist, the men of sin. He will be the Mahdi for the Muslims, Krishna for the Hindus, Buddha for the Buddhists, the Messiah for the Jews. For a lot of cults, he is a master or leader, which they call master. Okay. And he will proclaim to be Jesus the Christ. Don't be stupid, people. All right. Well, thank you very much for your comment. Now, funny thing is, is I actually agree with most of what you said. Now, he is the Imamati for the Muslims, Krishna for the Hindus. He's not the Buddha per se for the Buddhists. He's Maitreya Buddha, the fifth Buddha for the Buddhists. That's who they're looking for. And he is the Messiah for the Jews, uh, but he will never claim to be Jesus Christ, or and he's not the Antichrist. Now, I guess my question to you, if you're listening to this, if you want to answer back, that's your business. But I'll just pose this question to you or whoever else thinks like this. But at what, when you saw Maitreya in the media, or you saw him in your own life, what did he say specifically that leads you to believe that he's the Antichrist? And if you saw him in the media, when has he been proclaiming to be Jesus Christ? Let me know. Post a comment about that. Anyway, now, the Antichrist that people are looking for, scouring the internet, you know, putting on this celebrity or that political figure or Maitreya or this or whoever, it doesn't matter. You know, you really... <laughs> Don't, I think you're misinterpreting your own scriptures. This is just my own, own humble opinion on the matter. But according to the Ages Wisdom teachings, the Antichrist is an energy, and it's already come and gone. It's done its work. It's purposeful. It's nasty, but it's purposeful. And then when it does it, it destroys the old ways of thinking and relating to allow a new way of thinking and relating to occur. And that's the purpose of the Antichrist. It actually has a purpose. But it was never written in Revelation to be interpreted as an individual. Now, the funny thing is, is I actually caught this guy, uh, I can't remember his YouTube channel name, but he is a fundamentalist Christian, and he's talking about the end times in, in different ways, and he just happened to say, well, wonder if the Antichrist was Nero during the, Christ, you know, during the time that John was writing um, revelations and one of one of Hitler and the access powers were were the Antichrist and he kind of posed it as a question whether he he might have thought about it after he read or heard Benjamin Krem talk about it or something like that but little does he know he's actually right that the Antichrist was released during the time of Nero and it was released through Nero to end the, the Roman dispensation of things and to allow Christendom to flourish, which it did. And this last time was no different. It destroyed the old ways of thinking and relating to allow a new way of thinking and relating to occur. We see life as a humanity totally different than we did, you know, a hundred or so years ago. And it, which isn't really a long time, relatively speaking, for as long as humanity's been around. Very short amount of time, really that it's changed the way that we've thought and the way that we relate to one another. Like, I'm not saying we're perfect and I'm not saying we don't have a long way to go. I'm just saying that we don't 
see ourselves the same as we did 100 years ago. According to the masters, that is a direct result of this antichrist energy. But if you want to, you know, spend the rest of your life looking for the antichrist, putting it on this person or that person, feel free to do that. But according to the ageless wisdom teachings, the antichrist isn't going to come back for another I think what 3000 years. That'd be the next time the antichrist energy is released again and that will be the last time that it ever happens. But like I said, you know, you're free to do whatever you want to do. Now, um Maitreya will never claim to be the Mamadi or the Messiah for the Jews or the um, Hin uh, Krishna for the Hindus and that kind of thing, or even the Christ for the Christians. And when he was living in the Asian community of London, there were people who were starting to suspect that he was the Imamadi. They were Muslim and they were, that's what they were thinking. And that's what people were talking about. This guy could be the Imamadi. And I think a few of them even asked him point blank. And rather than him claiming to be the Imamadi, he said, well, if I'm the Imamadi for the Muslims, what about the Messiah for the Jews? And if you know anything about world history, the Messiah, I mean, the Jews and the, and the Muslims, they don't typically get along, just as Christians and, and Muslims don't get along very well, and Muslims and Hindus don't get along very well. And pretty much with the exception of the Buddhists, the other one, you know, each group doesn't get along with the other group, right? Sees life totally different, thinks that they have it, right and everybody else is wrong and those kind of things act out violently in that way and, and those kind of things because they feel like they are doing it because that's what God wants them to do or whatever, right? Well, I think Maitreya said it the best, but he said it about his own, the names that he's referred to, Christ, Imamadi, Maitreya Buddha, you know, the Messiah, those kind of, the world teacher, those kind of things. He said that these are just names and they're names that cause nothing but confusion within the minds of people. That's why he only wants to be referred to and looked to as a teacher. That's it. Now, he's a teacher in the broadest sense. He's, he's a, a spiritual teacher of like we've never seen before uh, on this planet. And he'll be speaking to humanity in a way, heart to heart, that we've never experienced before by anybody on TV, ever. And so we're... We're living in an extraordinary time because of this. But to say that he will claim to be Jesus or claim to be this is not true. You know, in fact, like I said, he'll just want to be really be looked to and referred to as the teacher because that's really who he is. He's not coming to create followers, according to Maitreya. And Maitreya says he's not coming to create, you know, a new religious doctrine. He's really coming more as a uh, economic and, and political advisor, really. Because that's where the crisis points are in humanity right now. That's what is the real danger. If we don't come together as a humanity, economically and politically, that's it. We got no more life on this planet. You know? And according to Maitreya, he says, without sharing, there will be no justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. And without peace, there will be no future. Because really, what does that mean? How would we destroy ourselves? Well, of course, militarily, we could destroy ourselves because we have nuclear weapons. And any conflict, like it is in between Ukraine and, and Russia, that could escalate to where China is involved, and the United States is involved, and other nations are involved. And that will, according to the masters, be the end of life on this planet because then nuclear weapons will start to be used at some point. It's very dangerous to shoot a bullet at anybody because it could escalate to the point where it, it totally destabilizes peace, ends up creating a third world war, that war would be nuclear and that would end life on this planet. Now, as dangerous as what's going on in, in Ukraine, in, between Ukraine and Russia, I don't even think that that is the most likely scenario of how we will end life on this planet if we don't start the principle of sharing. I think it's more environmentally is the problem because that is really the danger. If we do not restore the health of this planet, we will all die. We're all breathing in the same air, we're all drinking the same water, and we're all absorbing the same pollution because it's pollution that's killing humanity, it's pollution that's killing the environment. And until nations learn to trust one another, how would that ever be solved? So people ask me all the time about evidence about my of Maitreya. Where has he been speaking on TV? Can I, you know, can you refer this channel or this video on YouTube and so I can see, you know, that's what they want to see my Treya on TV and that kind of stuff. So then it'll be real to them for whatever reason. And I can't. 
But what I can offer is evidence of the teacher's teachings. And the one that he said, without sharing, there will be no justice. Without justice, there will be no peace. And without peace, there will be no future. I always bring it back to the Marshall Plan because historically, there's, this can prove what he's saying to be true. That the Marshall Plan, according to the Masters, is the only time in human history that humanity tried the principle of sharing. And look at what happened amongst those nations that participated in it. Not one of those nations has attacked one another since then. And, but there were times when they were, you know, because Germany a, was a part of the Marshall Plan and Germany was attacking this nation and that nation even in the last century. So it, it wasn't like, you know, ancient wars, you know, but Britain had at, once time, had one time been at war with the United States and vice versa. Of course, France and, and Germany, France and England. I mean, so nations, those nations had, had never, had not really seen eye to eye and at times had acted out violently against the other nation. But since then, France has not attacked Britain. Britain hasn't attacked um, the United States. The United States hasn't invaded Germany again. It's, there's been a relative peace amongst those nations. So it, it could be true. you could prove historically that what he says is true, that with the principle of sharing, that brought about justice amongst those nations and brought a measure of peace amongst those nations. And like I say, I always pose this as a question when I talk about the Marshall Plan, because it only happened for about four years now. And it's still, to this day, those nations have a peaceful relationship. But my question is, what, had, what it would have happened if we had never stopped the principle of sharing and it had been, abo- had been amongst every other nation on the planet? What kind of world would we be living in today? Would 9-11, would 9/11 happened? Would this war between Ukraine and Russia be happening? Would Vietnam have happened? Would the Korean War have happened? Would, would we have ever gone into Iraq and invaded Iraq if that was the case? I would say we would, have, we would have put war behind us at that point and it would have never come back. And that's what Maitreya says will happen when we do try the principle of sharing globally. It will be a step into the future. It will be a, a step into our own divinity, really is what it is. And we'll start to manifest goodwill at first and then trust amongst these nations. We'll start to solve the problems of, of the environment and, and restore health back to our planet and those kind of things. But it will really be the, the first steps into our own divinity when we do that, according to Maitreya. So, you know, it kind of leads me to the uh, next question that somebody asked. Uh, let's, let me flip back to it real quick. Excuse me. All right. Um, if we were to ask Maitreya about solving our environmental problems, what do you think he would suggest we do first? Well, it is the principle of sharing. There is nothing that we can do to solve the environmental problem until that, that will do any good until all the nations are starting to trust one another better than they're doing right now. And the only way to create trust amongst the nations is for nations to give of their excesses to other nations. Now, this is the principle of sharing and the way it works. Okay, so it's not rich nations just giving aid to poor nations and that's it. It's actually different than that. According to the masters, every nation has an excess. Every nation has a need. Some nations have more excesses than needs. Other nations have more needs than excesses. But every nation has, one, has both excesses and needs. And so... I, you know, I'm just going to offer up a very simple example, right? Uh, Iraq has a lot of oil and natural gas in excess, but they might be lacking in lumber because there's not a lot of wood around. So they could go to Canada and say, okay, we'll give you natural gas or oil for some of your lumber. Or, and then Canada gives some of the excess of lumber that they have to Iraq. They give them oil. And then let's say... Um, the United States has excess of corn and wheat and some food products that they could give to, you know, a Middle Eastern country for a resource that they have like lithium or something like that, you know, to help build batteries. And they give a little bit here, a little bit there. They don't have to give it all, just whatever their excess is. is. And that will start to bring about trust amongst these nations. So it looks perhaps differently than most people would imagine it to look, but that's kind of how it would start and how it would progress from there would be how we, you know, would be up to us really. But that would be enough to, for nations to learn to trust one another, to help solve the problems of the world according to the masters. So 
But even the environmentalists, even those people who are marching for, for economic justice and, and for in, in environmental justice, do not talk about the principle of sharing. Nobody's even talking about it. But we can't even get justice, racial justice or economic justice until the principle of sharing starts to take place. Just as we can't solve the environmental problem until the principle of sharing starts to take place. So, but anyway, thank you for the question. All right. Now, uh, hey there. So what's your take on UFOs? Do you think that they're actually here? And if they are, any thoughts on why they might be visiting us? Also, do you think that they could potentially mean us any harm? Curious to know what your perspective is. Uh, let's see. What's my take on UFOs? Um, and do I think they're actually here? Yes, they are actually here. More and more evidence is coming out daily almost that, that the government's are starting to release their, comp their their top secret files on uh, UFOs. People are just, you know, they just had a discussion on it uh, in the House of Representatives this week. There was all this news talk about people talking about it. I don't necessarily agree with what they were talking about, but they were at least talking about the UFO <laughs> you know, situation. Um, why are they here? They're here helping us. They're here on a spiritual mission, according to the masters. Uh, and then do you think I, they mean us any harm? No, they do not. These, uh, the beings that occupy the UFOs are humanity on, the, on our sister planets. Now, they are not in physical form as we are in physical form. They are in physical form known as the etheric, which according to the masters, there are four levels of etheric uh, physicality above gas. So we can't see them unless we have etheric vision unless they lower their vibration down to make it easier for us to see them. But they, according to the masters, have been here since the dawn of time, helping humanity along its way. Now they're really here in great number because we are destroying our planet in the way that we are from our pollution. They're here cleaning up the environment in the main. But everybody that occupies those, those um, spacecraft, known as the space brothers to the uh, masters, not aliens, not beasts as they, you know, people refer to them as or whatever. They are our elder brothers, just as these masters are our elder brothers too. And they learned a long time ago what we will be learning from Maitreya and these masters, that when you harm someone else, harm comes back to you. So they, they do no harm because they know the reality that what you sow so shall you reap. And if they did us any harm, that harm will come right back to them. So they live and work within the laws of life. That's why the masters are here teaching us, or here, here to teach us eventually the laws of life. That what you sow, you reap. What you, if you harm somebody, the harm comes back to you. So it's best to live harmlessly so you don't have, you know, a life of problems, you know, kind of deal. But yeah, they, they mean us no harm. They've, they've been here for a long time. They've helped us through some of the most critical moments in human history. And Maitreya, in the very near future, when he is out known for who he is, he will, conf he will confirm to all of humanity that what their purpose is, their spiritual purpose, and that they've been here and that we are not alone in the universe. It would be a great revelation for most of humanity. You know, we, most people think about it theoretically, but to know it for certain that we are not alone in the universe will be a revelation. Just as, a, you know, most of us, a lot of us have heard that we are souls, you know, to know that scientifically, which is going to happen in the very near future. Scientists in France will, will prove in a lab that we are souls. That will be a revelation for humanity, you know, too. I mean, we have some revelations coming our way that uh, will really blow a lot of the minds of, of most people, the reality of life on this planet, how different it is from what we were thinking it was. And this is all because of the time that we're entering into. And this is the reason why the, the Antichrist did its work and, and now it's done. We, we're seeing and relating th to, to each other totally different. Eventually, nations will start to relate to each other differently through the principle of sharing. Eventually, there'd be goodwill and trust amongst these nations, and then eventually manifested love on this planet, manifested unity on this planet. But thank you very much for your questions and your comments, everybody. I really appreciate it. I look forward to more in the future. I love you guys. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you later. Remember to take action.
and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. <laughs>